On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we are going to try to clean out the shop a little bit. What is going on guys? I'm Watch Chair Go, and today I'm back in the shop with this gigantic upright lift we used to uh, really start getting this place in shape. We would not have been able to do a lot of this without it. Uh, all of these cranes that were up here, we needed like a ton of firepower to get those things down. And this thing delivered. However, it really hasn't been used since. And one of the main reasons I have never used this thing again is because every time you run it up and down, it dumps like a full gallon of hydraulic fluid out of the cylinders on the ground. So the cylinder seals are completely gone. We really only used it a couple times and uh, then it just started making too much of a mess. It became too much of a liability to even have in the shop. And the epoxy floor guy was like, you can't get any more oil on the floor in here because we have to get it all off. Well, that means I can't use this thing at all. So I gotta get it out of here. Before we do, I wanna do a little bit of science with the engine here. So if you guys remember when we picked this thing up out of the field where it had been sitting for over like five years, uh, the engine was seized and it wouldn't run really at all. Uh, we ended up rebuilding the carb, uh, putting a fuel pump on it, uh, cleaning the points, cleaning the distributor, the entire assembly there, and uh, I think putting some random battery in it. And after that, we were able to finally get this thing running and get it over here. One thing we didn't show on that video is we changed the oil. We kind of changed the oil as an afterthought, but when we opened it up, it had been full of water and there was a milkshake going on. Of course, this is air-cooled, so that means all that water came in through the exhaust or something, which makes no sense because this exhaust is sealed. You can clearly see there's no holes in this exhaust or anything like that. So who knows how that water got in this engine? It literally doesn't make any sense. Uh, there's no holes on top, which would be draining back or anything like that. And it's kind of under its own roof. Like the platform on this uh, scissor lift becomes its own roof. Doesn't make any sense. That said, it was full of water. So today uh, I'm gonna do another oil change on it. We put fresh oil in it last time, but you know there was still junk in it. So let's put fresh oil in it again and maybe do a little bit of science, do a compression test before and after and see if maybe an engine additive or something can help bring back some of the ring seal. I know the rings are shot because it's hard to even be in here if this thing runs at all. So let's try to save as much of this old scissor lift as we can. And I did leave the uh, battery on the battery tender for the last few days. So it should be fully charged up and ready to run. Getting this thing out of the way will change the entire shop because it's basically the size of like a full size truck. It's huge. I can't wait to get it out of here and reclaim 20 by 20 of floor space here. So uh, let's hit the switch. It is cool for taking aerial pictures though. You're like halfway to the ceiling. All right. Fuel pump, we got power. Let's see this old beast start up. Smacked it a couple times with a wrench and... Let's see if this old engine has any compression. I'm going with, it probably doesn't. Apparently you can't use normal spark plug sockets, so I better go get another 13 sixteenths. Okay, we're starting with the back one because the cover on the uh, cylinder head is so jacked up, you can't really access the front one. So, oh, she comes right out. All right then. Look at that plug. That is nasty, <laughs> nasty, nasty. All right, uh, let's throw the compression tester in here. We're taking guesses on compression. Let me know in the comments below. I'm guessing like 20. I'm guessing the worst thing in the world because this thing is barely running at this point. So we have both plug wires off, should crank, obviously won't start. Let's take a gander at our compression test. <laughs> That's not bad. 90, I thought this engine was gonna be toast. And that one looks super lean. So we got one that's like pig rich and one that's, I mean, nasty, nasty lean, which is weird. Now for the rest of the quest, is this cylinder bad? Almost 100 this time, that's like, 95 right there. Interesting. 
Hey, let's go on a mission. We're gonna run to O'Reilly's. We're gonna get new plugs. These are Champion D16s and we're going to get oil and we're gonna change this oil and we'll grab an engine additive while we're there as well and uh, see if we can make this thing kind of get better. Hopefully we can heal this engine with uh, magical fluids. We'll see what happens. It's always fun to test stuff like this. We are here for oil and some oil additive. I don't know which one. Let's see what they've got. So I use the Rizlone stuff on the three series and this one says right there, ring seal and smoke repair. Let's do it. Plus it's six bucks. Have a good one. All right, thanks Trisha. You bet. Enjoy. Yep, will do. This engine does feature the worst oil fill and oil drain of all time. Uh, it's hard to see, but if I can make it focus back there, the oil drain is that square plug sticking out right above the yellow. And the oil fill is that thing buried back there by the alternator. Time to pull the plug and make a gigantic mess. This is going to go everywhere and I'm going to try to stop it. I also put cardboard under the engine and everything. Oh! Yep, giant mess. That oil is pure trash. Just as much water as was in it last time, even though it's parked inside the whole time. It's also full of gas. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of fuel in that. You can see from the colors down there, I got most of that stuff flushed out. That's fresh oil running out of there. I went ahead and put in just a little bit of the Syntec just to start with. And as that watery milky oil runs out, we'll put the plug back in and then we'll fill it with the Rizlone and then fill it with the oil. So I stuck my finger in this accidentally and it is pure slime. Look at it move. It's like honey from the local honey stand right there. All right, here we go, pouring in the whole bottle. Ew, have at it, alien slime. The Rizlone is installed. Now we're gonna dump in some O'Reilly Syntec, their new full synthetic brand, Tindub 30. And uh, like I said, this is the worst pour of all time. So uh, no Bluetooth funnels today. It's literally impossible, even with a funnel. But maybe if you ran the uh, lift up, it'd be usable, but it just is not usable. So you basically just pour it beside the carburetor and hope that it goes in the funnel. While that oil is slowly filling, I got new spark plugs. Oh, that didn't work at all. This thing just gave up on life. These are uh, NGK 2438s. Uh, obviously in the GTR video, I put auto lights in the car. It's because it's the only plug they had that interchanges with the GTR's uh, plug. I can officially say this was the world's messiest oil change. I'd say almost a quart of it ended up on the floor throughout all this just insanity. But now it's all in and the Rizlone says run it for uh, 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and we're gonna let it idle. I bet it runs better already on those new plugs and all that good stuff. And I'll get all the stuff off here that's gonna vibrate away and uh, try to just keep this thing running. So, should be good to go. The only thing we have to worry about is as it starts, right, this controls forward and back, and I don't need this thing to move one bit. It'll start just crushing stuff immediately. So, here we go. Man, this thing is upset these days. There it goes. I might actually lose my hearing from something. It is obnoxious. Old clattering thing. It's been 15 minutes. Let's see if this thing will still turn after this. All right, that's good news, good news. Uh, let's let it cool off for just a minute here. And it's nice and warm now, fully up to temp. Uh, I'm gonna pull the spark plug wires, pull the plugs, and we'll compression test again, see if there are any changes there. But I can tell you without a doubt, you guys saw for your own eyes, zero smoke. Honestly, like we couldn't even let this thing idle in here before because your eyes would start burning, you know, and uh, we'd have to keep the doors open. I don't understand, it's been running for the last 15 minutes and one bottle of stuff eliminated the smoke. Pretty crazy. Um, 
the old honey butter. So we'll give it a minute and we'll compression test again, see if the results change. Of course we had 90 on the back and about 95 on the front. And uh, yeah, I mean, if there's more compression, this stuff is really crazy. I'm hoping it works kind of like BG's EPR and helps kind of free up the rings. All right, here's our spark plug inspection after 15 minutes. That back cylinder looks incredibly lean. That is pure white with weird carbon deposits on the bottom. Pure white. And this plug looks incredibly lean. At least they match. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a little black background for the contrast. So these additives are typically like polymers that are meant to kind of fake seal the rings and they don't actually bring them back. Now the BG one does kind of bring some ring seal back. And I know that a leak down test might be more appropriate for this, but I've never needed to own a leak down test kit before. So I bought one a minute ago. It won't be here for like 10 days, but here comes uh, cylinder one. This is the one where we had about 95 before. I mean, it's like two PSI higher than it was before. So I guess that's something. Here's our last test. This is the rear cylinder one more time. Well, that one is considerably higher. Almost five PSI, 10 PSI higher there. Yeah, that's the 100 mark actually. Huh, interesting results. We do have slightly more compression. And I don't know if that's due to like the long chain polymers and the thickness of the oil. It might've modified the viscosity a little bit or just having good oil in it. Cause obviously that was some 50% water mix is what I was running before. Uh, hopefully this keeps the bearings alive and hopefully it keeps this old scissor lift working again. Uh, whether the old owner decides to ever come pick it up or if it just goes and sits back out in the field for another five years. It would be unfortunate, and I did think about diesel swapping this because I have a Hartz diesel that would be perfect for this thing. And I know everyone wanted to LS swap it. Obviously, that's ridiculous. I would never do that, especially on something that'll never get used again. And let's check the oil one last time before. Oh, yeah. No more milk. Check it out. Right. Oh, well, it was right above the D. <laughs> I said it. Uh, now it's probably perfect. So that's a lot better than what we had going on before. Close this thing up. Let's get it on the trailer and get it back to its home out in a field or somewhere. Who knows? Of course, I hooked the trailer up to the F-250 and I didn't have any trailer lights, the running lights at least. The brake lights were great. Fuse is blown. Uh, that probably happened on the other trailer that has some weird wiring issues. I need to rewire that whole trailer from scratch, but uh, Time to run to O'Reilly's, grab this tiny little 30 amp and should be good to go. We'll see if she wants to start. Out for a Sunday drive. <laughs> there we go. This is the slowest scissor lift, but it sure puts in work. We had to give up on our plans of loading the scissor lift on the tilt trailer. It's too wide. Unfortunately, it's just that much too wide. We'll go get the gooseneck and then finally get this thing out of here. So here's the oil that came out of it. Check that out. Doesn't that look pretty? Some like caramel milk. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watch where you can get cool shirts, uh, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I'll talk to you next time. 
on the next episode of Engine Science, of course. I'm having fun with engine science. Hopefully you guys are too. I'll keep testing all the additives and random engines and stuff. I know it's not like a scientific conclusion because we don't have like seven of the same engines or anything like that. But at least we try out the additives and see if they actually work and things. Weirdly, another one that just works really well. Look what came in. A ton of people hit me up about this. Unfortunately, all the messages are too late. I was on a roll to buy fire truck stuff and uh, I bought this like immediately. So this, if I can cut it, a brand new knife is the Streamlight for the Streamlight dock in this thing. And I talked to some firefighters, literally in Derby while we were picking up that town car yesterday. And they were like, the LED ones are garbage. And I was like, what? I wanted the LED one. They're like, no, you can't see through smoke with the triple LED light. So I really wanted to convert this thing, do something. But apparently, if you're a firefighter, this one is the realist. Now this one has been worked on and they had swapped the switch, but ooh wee. That thing is still bright to this day. Wow, look over, I mean, it's fighting off 1.5 million candle power over there on the wall. That thing is very bright. Well, cool. I am very satisfied with my purchase and apparently it's firefighter approved. They came over while we were getting gas with like a brand new fire truck, super nice. We ended up talking for a long time. Also the Arcadia Fire Department said they had one of these that might've needed batteries or something and I could have it, but I had already bought this again. Uh, let's plug it in. I'm super pumped about plugging this thing in. So if we turn this thing to on, hit the master. And it's not charging. No. So apparently there's a green LED for charge and a red LED for charging. Uh, red LED should turn off within 24 hours of starting charge. Do I have to like... Well, folks, there you have it. More troubleshooting required. I will get on that. <laughs> that thing's sweet. And uh, we'll get this light going.